Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In today's video, we'll be looking at gain staging in Reaper. This is a follow-up to a previous video called Preparing to Mix in Reaper Part 1. If you've not seen that video, click the link above to take a look. If you ask different people what gain staging means, you'll likely get a lot of different answers. Some like to have each of their tracks hitting no greater than minus 18 dB full scale at Unity, whereas others would say minus 12 or minus 6 is the magic number. There are certain plugins that have what's called a sweet spot and they like to be fed at a certain decibel rating. But truth be told, to my understanding, there is no exact definition of what it means to properly gain stage. There's no magic number that you need to hit. In its simplest form, gain staging means to leave enough clean headroom for each of your tracks to be processed without clipping the master. Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios recently did an excellent video about gain staging where he went into great detail to explain how this works. The other Adam from Hi YouTube I'm Dad also recently did a video showing his process for gain staging. At the end of the day, so long as you leave room for processing, there really is no right or wrong answer or perfect method for how one gain stages. While I'm no expert on the topic, today we'll take a look at how I go about gain staging. The track we'll be working with today is the same one from the previous video. It's entitled Who's Who in Hell by a band called Last Legacy. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to download the multitracks to follow along. Let's take a look. If you followed along in the last video, you'll notice that I've got all of my tracks neatly organized in a way that I like. Currently all the tracks are centered and are at unity. If I play the song now as is, it's most likely going to clip the master and sound terrible because it's not balanced or panned. Let's take a listen. And right out of the gate, you can see that we're already clipping the master and we're also clipping several of the individual tracks. I'll clear all the peaks and then we'll get started. I think an area that I'd like to start focusing on is the screams. So I'll scroll over to those tracks and solo the screams folder and take another listen and watch for which tracks are peaking. While none of the individual tracks are clipping, we can see that the Screams channel as a whole is clipping by about 1.5 decibels. Peaks are registering on each of the individual tracks all over the place. We've got some at minus 2, minus 2.1, minus 2.8, minus 5.6, and so on. Regardless of what the actual number is, we have absolutely no room for additional processing. So it's a good idea for us to get the media items turned down to where we can have the cumulative effect not clip that bus. You have to keep in mind that with as many tracks as we have in this project, when they all add up together, it's going to be a whole lot more than what the master bus can handle. Let's start with track 41. I'm going to expand track 41 in the arrange view by pressing the exclamation point key. You'll see that now that the track is expanded, I've got a volume knob that allows me to turn the wave up or down before it hits the fader. If you don't have that as an option, you can accomplish that by going to Options and Preferences. We'll take a look under the Appearance and Media tab. And here we have media item buttons. In the media item button section, place a check mark on volume knob. I also like the option that gives me a handle at the top of the waveform that allows me to turn the waveform down. Press OK, and we'll start by turning down track 41. I'll solo it so we can focus on this one by itself, and let's turn it down by about 8 decibels and check again. To become the man. Dream over, over. That seems to be averaging around minus 18 with some peaks that are hitting around minus 6. That should be fine. Let's check another section. Me. That should be good, but I think I may want to turn it down just a little bit more. Let's take it to minus 9. Save me. And that's still averaging around minus 18 with peaks hitting right around minus 6. We'll switch to track 42 and expand that. Then solo it. You'll notice that as I'm clicking solo, it's soloing that track exclusively. There are different solo modes for tracks in Reaper. Right click the solo button and you'll see the different options. I'm pressing Ctrl Alt and clicking solo which makes that exclusive solo. It automatically unsolos anything that I had previously and allows me to focus on this one track. My assumption is that this track is going to be similar to the last one so I'll start by turning it down by about 8 decibels. That seems to be doing about the same. It's averaging around minus 18 and peaking around minus 6. I'll take it down a little bit further. And that should be good. Let's move on to track 43 and we'll do the same. I'll highlight the track, press the exclamation point to enlarge the track, then Control alt left click on solo to give that exclusive solo. I'll start by turning this one down about 8 decibels. Now at this point I'm choosing an arbitrary number just based on what I saw in the last tracks. This may take a few adjustments to get it just right, but let's take a listen. That's doing about the same, averaging around minus 18 with some peaks around minus 6. Let's take it down just a little bit further. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
That should be good. We'll know for sure once we get them all activated again. But let's move on to track 44. You get the idea. Essentially what I'm trying to do is make sure that I've got enough volume left for processing and that all these tracks can play without overriding the master. I'll finish up the rest of these scream tracks and we'll catch up in a few. Okay, all the screams are done, so let's solo the screams bus and see how this sounds all together. We're now able to play all the scream tracks back and the screams bus doesn't go any further than minus six. That's a pretty good starting point. Let's take a listen to the lead vocals. I'll go to track 33, which is my lead vocals bus, and I'll do exclusive solo with control alt click on the solo button again, and we'll take a listen to that. I'll need to go back to the beginning of the song where there's clean vocals to where we can hear some of this. You leave me broken, so broken. That's hitting about minus 0.1 on the lead vocals bus, and as you could hear, most of these are duplicates. So we know that all of these are not going to be used at full volume, but we still need to give ourselves room for processing. This time I want to do something a little bit different. I'll start with track 34, which is the primary lead vocal, and I'll enlarge that. Then I'll right click and drag to draw a box around all of those lead vocal tracks and release. That selects all of them, and I can use my volume handle on track 34 to turn them all down at the same time. We'll take them down about 8 decibels and then see what we get. Those collectively are now peaking at about minus 6. That should give us room for processing since all of these tracks are not all going to be at unity. Let's move on to the background vocals. We'll follow the same process. I'll solo the background vocals bus and then we'll go to track 48 and enlarge that and select all of the background vocals tracks just like we did before. Broken, so broken. Those seem to be averaging around minus 18, with track 49 peaking a bit around minus 6. I think I'll turn each of these down about 3 decibels just to give us a little bit of headroom there. And let's try again. Broken, so broken. That should be fine. You'll notice that I'm not necessarily targeting an exact number, but I'm just trying to give myself room. Let's take a listen to the vocals bus, keeping in mind that this is not mixed and not panned, and see how much room we've got left for processing. Leave me broken, so broken. Let's try that again and pay close attention to the meter on track 32, which is the vocals bus. Leave me broken, so broken. That came in at about a max of minus 5.1, which should be fine. Let's check the section where the screams come in. If I can find it, looks like it's about right here. And we're still peaking around minus six, which gives us plenty of room for processing on the vocals bus. Let's move on to guitars. I'll solo the guitars bus. And let's take a listen from the beginning of the song. Guitars are looking okay. If we take a look at the meters in Reaper, this number that's frozen here shows minus 8.3 on the rhythms bus. That is how much those are peaking. I do think that I'll need to give a bit more headroom to these, so I'll go up to the guitars just like I did with the other tracks. I'm going to remove my dock temporarily. I do that by pressing Alt D, and that allows me to see the arrange view a bit better. I'm going to draw a box around all my guitars with right click and drag, and I'll focus on the top guitar track and just turn these down by, let's say, about six decibels. I'm arbitrarily picking a number, I just want to make sure that I've got some room. Let's bring the dock back up and take a look now. That's got me sitting a little bit better and gives me a little bit more room to work with with guitars. Let's take a listen to the bass.
Now the base is averaging below minus 18, which in my opinion is a bit too weak for it. So I think I'd like to turn that up a little bit. Although before I change anything with the gain staging on the base, I may want to check a part that's a bit louder. Let's check here. That's coming in around minus six. I think I may want to turn the bass up just a couple of dB, and I hope that compression will be sufficient to keep it in line. Now that we've got the vocals and the guitars and the bass mostly gain stage, let's mute the drums and see how much headroom we've got. I'll start back at the beginning. Now you can see over on the master that this is still coming pretty close to clipping, so we may need to look at our tracks again and bring them down even further. We have no room to add in the drums without clipping. Let's test that theory by unmuting the drums. Well, I was wrong. It actually didn't clip, but we still have no room for any processing, so I think we should still go back through and turn some things down. The vocals were the loudest just then, so let's go back and take a look at our vocals and regain stage. We'll start with the lead vocals. You leave me broken, so broken. We're peaking around minus six on the lead vocals, so let's take a look at these tracks and start to turn them down a little bit further. I'll just grab all of them for now and turn them down maybe another two decibels or so. That gives us a bit more room, but if we look at track number 37, we'll see that it's coming nowhere near the minus 18. Let's solo that and take a listen. You leave me broken, so broken. I do like to have my tracks fairly well balanced to where I know at Unity they're at the same relative level, so I think I'd like to turn this particular track up a bit to get it a bit closer. Let's take it up maybe another three or four decibels. You leave me broken. I'd at least like to get it around minus 18. I suppose I should have paid a little more attention to that track in the beginning. Let's take a listen to that vocals bus again and see what we've got. You leave me broken, so broken. You build me up. Let's bring down track 34 a bit to get it a bit closer to minus 18. I know that earlier we had mentioned that there's not a magic number, but what I'm looking at in this case is that I'd like to have at least six decibels of room for processing on my master track, and right now I've got way too much, so something has got to come down to make room for all of these tracks. We'll take the lead vocals down another, say, three decibels or so. You leave me broken, so broken. 36 could stand to come down just a little bit as well. Basically what I'm looking at at this point is that in Unity, I'd like for all these tracks that are moving at the same time to be around the same relative level, while not overriding its bus. You leave me broken, so 36 and 38 can both stand to come down just a touch. You leave me broken, so As I mentioned before, there's several different ways that you can gain stage. I like doing it this way with the waves themselves. Other people like to use a trim plugin, which Reaper does have a trim plugin. Let's take a look at one of those. For track 38, I'll click on the effects button and do a search for the word volume. There's a plugin called Volume Adjustment. I'll add that. Here I can turn an item up or down before it hits the fader. If you choose to use this method, you can use it as a trim in any spot in your effects chain. But if this is your primary method for gain staging, it should be the first thing in your effects list. I'm going to remove that because I prefer to use the method with the volume handles. Let's listen again. Track 39 is still peaking a bit high, so let's make some adjustments to that. You leave me broken, so broken. A little bit less. You leave me broken, so broken. That's got us averaging roughly around minus 18 for all of those vocal tracks. Now, I know that once this is all said and done, I'm not going to have all of these at Unity, but I still would prefer to have more room on my master even at Unity. Let's unsolo this and take a listen to it all together. You leave me broken, so broken. 
It looks like our background vocals are peaking kind of high, so we may need to go and revisit those. I realize this video is a lot longer than my typical video, but gain staging can take some time, and sometimes it's just a little bit of trial and error before you get it right. What's important is that you make sure that all of your tracks can be played without clipping the master, and that you make sure that you've got enough room for your plugins to be processed. I'll speed through the rest of this, and then we'll come back and revisit this once I'm done. <laughs> That took a whole lot longer than anticipated, but now I can play through some of the loudest parts of the song and I still have about 6 decibels of processing room on the master, and that's with all of my tracks at Unity. That's essentially where I want to be because now I'm in a good position to start balancing out these tracks and getting a rough mix. Let's take a listen to it as is, keeping in mind that right now everything is at Unity and nothing is panned. It doesn't sound great, and there's still some parts where it's coming kind of close to clipping, but I think we're still in pretty good shape, because a lot of these tracks are duplicates and are going to be blended in at a much lower volume. The next time we look at this project, we'll start to craft our rough static mix, which means that there will not be any automations, but we'll just have a basic rough balance with our volumes, and also we'll have things panned out left and right and center and all the different points in between to start helping this to sound like a proper song. We'll also start to introduce plugins then to start to fix problem areas. Gain staging gets to be easier the more you do it, but at the same time it can be challenging depending on the material. In this case I've got a whole lot of transients and loud instruments and I really needed to turn things down a lot louder than I anticipated in order to give me enough room for processing. Even so, this is what you must do each and every time you start to mix to give yourself enough room to add plugins to get things processed properly and get them sounding their best. Again, there's several different ways that you can gain stage. You can use the item volume knobs, you can use the item volume handle at the top of the media items, or you can use plugins to help you achieve a proper gain stage for each of your tracks. What's important at the end is that you've got enough room left over for processing. I know I've said that a lot of times, but it's important that you understand that gain staging, simply put, is giving yourself room to start mixing. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee link below. I like coffee. Also, check the description for a link to join us on Discord. See you next time. Gain staging. What can I even say about gain staging? It's one of those things like mastering. It's a black art. There's no definite description for it. Does anybody really understand it? I barely understand it. I just know that these tracks are too loud and something's got to get done.